Hi, this is Sahana. Today we are going to understand data annotations in Entity Framework Code. We have already discussed data annotations in our previous sessions. Today we are going to discuss in detail. Data annotations are the attributes that can be applied to model classes to define various behaviors. Look at this employee class. Here key and required are the data annotation attributes. They are applied on the properties. Data annotations are used for various purposes, including defining validation rules, data formatting, localization, database schema generation, and so on. Today, we are going to discuss data annotations with respect to Entity Framework Core. In Entity Framework Core, data annotations are used to configure different aspects of entities directly in the code. Now, when to use data annotations? Entity Framework Core includes many model building conventions that are enabled by default. We can use data annotation to customize the model which will override the configuration performed by conventions. Please note, we can also use Fluent API to customize the model. If both are used, then Fluent API will override the configuration performed by data annotations. If you want to learn more about Fluent API, then I have a dedicated video. Please visit my channel and go through the playlist named Entity Framework Code. Let's understand this with an example. Here we have Manager class and we have few properties, Manager ID, first name and last name. We have used this Manager class as DB set. Look at this app DB context. Here we have managers. We have not used data annotation attributes or Fluent API to customize the behavior. Now Entity Framework Core uses set of default conventions to determine the mapping between manager class and manager table. In this case, manager ID is going to be the primary key and managers is going to be the table name and navigation property is used to decide the relationship. Now let's understand how to customize the default behavior using data annotations. If you want to have different name for table, then you can use table data annotation attribute. Within square brackets, write table, then this is inside the namespace component model dot data annotations dot schema. Import that namespace, then specify the name for the table. Now entity framework core will create a table by name all managers instead of managers. You can use key attribute to specify that this is the primary key. This is inside component model dot data annotations. Next we have property by name first name. Entity framework core creates table columns with the same name as property names. If, if you want to have some other name for the column, then you can use column attribute. Now column will be created by manager first name. If you want to make it required, then you can use required attribute. If you want to specify the maximum characters for the string property, then you can use string length attribute. Suppose I have a property, but I don't want to include that property in table. Then how to do that? Here I have a property. Now I will use not mapped attribute. Property with attribute not mapped is not used while creating a table. Based on our requirement, we can use data annotation attributes to customize the behavior. Here is the list of commonly used data annotation attributes in Entity Framework Core. Please check the description. I have written short description for each of these attributes for your reference. You can choose the attributes based on your application requirement. I hope the session was useful. Thanks for your time. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.